dear friends, and welcome. We are happy to see you at our live conversation on Alator TV Ireland. We continue meetings with new, inspiring, and enthusiastic people in our discussion about the creative society, the society where you can live safely and happily. My name is Dr. Constantine. I am a Latra IPM participant, and it is my great pleasure to host this live conversation together with beautiful Geraldine, who previously was a special guest in our interview on one of our Alatra TV channels and shared her vision about the Creative Society. And today, Geraldine invited her friend, whom we are going to introduce in a moment. Geraldine, hello, how are you today? Hi, Dr. Constantin. I'm well, and how are you today? Good, good, thank you. May I ask you for a favor to introduce our today's guest, please? Okay. Well, welcome to the show, Rania. I'm happy to introduce today's guest, which is Rania Lampo from Greece. Rania is a multi-awarded global educator, researcher, international motivational speaker, author, editorial board member of several journals, Global Peace Ambassador, and many, many more. Welcome, dear Rane, Rania. Greetings from Greece, from beautiful <laughs> Athens. I'm very, very enthusiastic and very excited. I'm invited today with all of you uh, to do this uh, so significant TV broadcast about the Creative Society Project. We're going to discuss about it. Uh, so I think that we will have uh, a wonderful time. At the same time, uh, it will be a very constructive discussion. I'm so glad you're here, Rania. And just so that everybody knows, Rania and I connected in various conferences prior to this. We are also part of a few organizations together. In addition, this is my second time interviewing Rania. She is super fabulous and you will immediately feel her good vibe because she is so, so amazing and so well informed about the education system. So Rania, you are an enormously active person. So could you please share with us what is your primary focus nowadays and what motivates you in your life? Well, my primary focus is always education and in particular my educational projects. My love for students is what made me dedicate my career in teaching, and my students are my main inspiration every day. I'm the founder and international coordinator of many humanitarian international projects implemented mostly in Africa and Asia that focus on the United Nations Sustainable Development Goal, uh, described in the 2030 Agenda. And uh, my project aim actually at promote, uh, promoting promo uh, positive peace. During the COVID pandemic, also I launched uh, a new uh, the national project, which is called COVID-19, a uh, life-changing experience. It, uh, obviously, it aims at promoting knowledge about coronavirus and the ways it spreads the disease, encouraging students to share their feelings and their experiences concerning this outbreak, but giving them also the opportunity to develop creativity and collaboration through uh, project-based learning activities. And uh, a brand new project also I launched very recently is uh, called uh, uh, Gender-Based Violence, Why Peace is a much, much better option. And it is inspired by uh, the situation of uh, high rates of gender-based violence in Nigeria. Uh, it has started to be implemented in schools there and is actually um, aims at uh, raising gender-based violence awareness uh, to students who uh, experience uh, conflict situations. Uh, at the same time, um, I'm, I'm trying to uh, promote STEAM vision here in Greece. Um, I recently wrote a new project for the Greek Ministry about environmental education, uh, which is called SOS. So we're changing the yes, climate. It's going to be implemented in Greek schools uh, next academic year. And it's original because it combines environmental education, STEM education and arts. I'm also the uh, founder of many astronomy projects um, as an active member of uh, the Greek Astronomy Space Company and the Hellenic Field Society. We're organizing uh, many uh, lectures, many uh, seminars and conferences, not only for um, uh, the lay person, but especially for the privileged children. 
And at the same time, um, um, volunteering during my, during my free time, I uh, devote myself to teaching uh, STEM to children uh, with cancer in the ecological hospital to refugees and also uh, to uh, students uh, with special education needs. At the same time, I'm fighting for the equality between women and men in the field of natural sciences because it's a huge challenge to uh, change the impression that the science is for boys and not for, uh, for girls. And uh, so I'm um, trying to organize um, a radio broadcast with my students and many educational videos. And also I'm author, author of scientific books for kids. Uh, as we said, also I'm a social activist, global peace ambassadors. And for all these projects, I have received many humanitarian peace awards. I forgot to mention that uh, recently here in Greece, I became the national ambassador of volunteerism and education of the Greek Academy of Volunteerism, Education, Help, Hellas. And my, my role here is to promote volunteerism in education, to integrate volunteerism in the curriculum, and uh, help uh, uh, to the creation of a global network of Greek volunteers all around the world that will promote the message and value of volunteerism. Oh, I'm sorry, my microphone was muted. Uh, I'd like to go with the traditional question right now that we uh, address to our guests. Uh, Rainer, please share with us your understanding of how you envision the creative society and what is the creative society for you. Can you share with us your opinion and your vision, please? Creative society for me is a society where uh, there is a complete harmony among the individuals of the community in religious, social, economic, and political spheres in life. Um, an aggregate of people living together in a harmonious community with common values and customs. And I also envi envision a, a political economic order that is stable, just, prosperous, and democratic. That means a stable governmental system which is uh, associated uh, with a climate of confidence, civic law and order, as well as personal safety. Uh, a just uh, system uh, distributing available resources, uh, opportunities and basic services such as education, health, uh, housing, equitably. Um, a prosperous economy based on a sustainably strong civic rights that are uh, safeguarded. Um, uh, a democratic system with freedom of speech. Um, democracy, for me, uh, involves much more than periodic voting. It involves uh, the presence of a civic culture based on public accountability, public responsibility, and as... Um, uh, Lincoln said, uh, democracy is uh, government of the people, for the people, and by the people. So the main components of uh, my creative society uh, would be uh, liberty in religion, politics, and economics, economics, equality, uh, uh, of course, efficiency and community, um, economy based on sustainably strong growth rate and dynamic uh, job creation. Um, so a creative society has actually should have greater opportunities, balance, meaning, and needs, of course, to fulfill certain uh, criteria. First of all, it should have um, equality among men. A perfect society is more equal and ecologically sound. Um, a society where every person can have a decent life, and decent life means access uh, to resources like quality healthcare, education, um, selflessness, care and love among people are other uh, important uh, features of this uh, society. And of course, in this society, man does not live for himself, but lives for others. And people will um, tackle conflicts uh, between religious, political, uh, philosophical beliefs with goodwill and tolerance and be uh, stoical when uh, such conflicts seem inevitable. So this uh, world uh, would be a much more friendly, helping environment compared, of course, to what happens today, to our today's society, because 
uh, in our world today, all individuals have uh, the tendency to be judgmental, to be competitive and hostile. So in this world, the majority of this tendency would not exist. Uh, creative society is what we strive for, and uh, we aim to build it around uh, core values such as equality, democracy, and uh, sustainability. And society around us, we know all that uh, plays a major role in our behavior. So uh, this society should guide us, the creative society should guide us towards the good uh, direction. Um, because life is complex and multifaceted, uh, multifaceted. So to flourish, we need a variety of things such as community, democracy, um, employment, environment, freedom, happiness, health, housing, inclusion, law and order. Um, of course, uh, we can't have a perfect society because we as human beings were not uh, perfect. But uh, we can, uh, however, uh, improve our quality of life. I fully agree with you, Rania. You know, so um, as of for, uh, as of today, people from all over the world are shaping the model of the creative society and share the ideas of how will all spheres uh, function in such a society. Could you please share how you see an essential sphere as education? Mm hmm. Um, so, um, as an educator, uh, I want to say that every experience is an opportunity for discovery and learning. Life is a school where uh, the wealth of multicultural and uh, uh, intergenerational exchanges contributes to broadening the mind, where everyone is called in turn to play the role of educator and student according to their skills. We as educators, we are also students at the same time. So any activity can be experienced as a reflection of our um, uh, inner life through uh, which we learn to better know ourselves and to develop harmonious relationships with others and the world around us. Uh, so um, schools and creative society educate students to, uh, uh, to encourage universal harmony and coexistence and to understand collective human goals, shared prosperity and development of human civilization. Every classroom should depict a small world equipped with ICT, where pupils are facilitated to interact, exchange and communicate. And their learning goes beyond the class content to learn about multicultural, multi-ethnic, multi-religious uh, uh, world. Uh, there are no, there should no, uh, there should not be concern about discrimination based on race, uh, color, uh, or religion, affiliation, because uh, we should uh, actually change the world. I, um, I applaud the process of self-education. Self-education because uh, uh, qualities and virtues are cultivated in order to grow in consciousness and understanding of ourselves. Um, so we, in this case, we can communicate the knowledge we practice and analyze, not only verbally, but through our behavior and example. So with self-education, we have an open choice of projects and activities related to uh, our developmental needs. But at the same time, I need that learning through action is very important. Uh, we need concrete action, practice, and practical applications. We need, obviously, a system that allows uh, a range of subjects to be taught equally to all, and subjects, uh, topics should not be forced onto students. Rather, let the students have a touch to all and be given an option in future years. That means that many schools, unfortunately, don't give options at all. Uh, they uh, have students focus on what the school wants them to focus. And also, um, for example, memorization has sadly become an enormous part of education in recent years, and um, this is uh, something that needs to change. We need a system that also examines uh, student skills in a less systematic and standardized way, um, because we must make the educational system an environment where people are encouraged to improve on where their own talents lie, rather than be judged and feel bad. Uh, for not excelling in uh, every field. Um, so we need an education that not only focuses on formal education, but informal and not formal education too. 
to encourage understanding of soft skills and creative thinking, because growing is not all about being able to solve uh, equations and knowing how to pass exams. It is much more than that. And the current system fails to educate us about such things. Because what is the point in passing exams if you fail to communicate, lead people or, or work in teams? Uh, however, in a creative society, we can develop a strong, inclusive um, assessment system for all levels of education worldwide. And this assessment does not um, focus on uh, easily what we call um, quantifiable uh, measures, such as graduation rates, uh, but uh, it is more focused on qualitative learning. And this assessment is beyond... Um, uh, is, uh, uh, should be based on creativity, on problem-solving skills, on social, political, economic contribution, leadership skills, and global values, universal citizenship. Um, and, of course, uh, our education system should be managed by all stakeholders, parents, governments, teachers, school, uh, policymakers, business community, because education is a huge obligation and responsibility, and we cannot... Um, afford to leave it on the shoulder, the shoulder of any uh, one uh, stakeholder. Uh, collective management and supervision of our education system um, have made it more accountable. So we do not live um, in an ideal world, um, and maybe an ideal education system may seem like a far goal to reach. However, many countries so far are realizing uh, where to improve on, and the rest of the world should follow the lead. Many countries are developing in many aspects in terms of education, technology, modernization, and more. It is now for us time to reflect on the core of uh, what builds our future. Thank you very much for your answer. You mentioned quite a lot of um, challenges uh, that today's system of education is facing, but please share with us, maybe briefly, to outline the most challenging challenges that today's system of education is facing. It can be either in Greece or globally. From your point of view, what are these most challenging issues that we have in the education system? Please share. Mm -hmm. um, whether we like it or not, we are in a paradigm shifting age and we realize that we have many challenges to face. So first of all is I think the most important of all is sustainability, because we are depleting the planet's biocapacity at an uh, exponential rate. And if current behaviors do not stop soon, we will quickly uh, exhaust our planet's resources. Um, so human beings will face a level of resource scarcity that will make life intolerable uh, of not impossible. So we need environmental education. It's something that is urgent in education. Another challenge is that in most schools, um, students are complaining about high levels of stress as they carry out hyperactive lifestyles and that can become unhealthy and compulsive. And this has led to some uh, responses, especially in areas in the area of what we call mindfulness. So how, uh, what are uh, uh, schools should do to promote happy and focused calm? Uh, and how does this mindfulness movement stand up to this challenge? Another challenge is uh, that the machines that humans have built are challenging, uh, challenging the singularity and the uniqueness of some of the essential uh, components of human intelligence. Human beings, including young people, appear increasingly attached to devices and dependent on them. So what are the, could be the implications for education? And of course, another challenge is that we need to redefine the curriculum. Uh, we need to rethink what is taught in school entirely, and perhaps we should have less content and opening more time and more opportunities for skills development. So um, now in the conditions of the consumer world, we see that the main focus of science is on the military industry. Rani, what goals and objectives should science have in a creative society, in your opinion? Mm -hmm. As uh, research and technology are changing, uh, society and the way we live, uh, scientists... Um, can no longer claim that science is neutral, uh, but they must consider the ethical and social aspects of the world, of the work, because um, as uh, scientific progress becomes increasingly fundamental to society, it is constantly challenging 
and um, opposing with uh, our ethical values. So scientists should be concerned about the use of scientific knowledge and they should address the ethical questions, both in general terms in terms of their own work. Um, many, for example, technologies, we can uh, actually um, blame any technology. Many technologies, uh, uh, for example, internet was uh, conceived by military programs, or uh, we can talk about um, uh, genetically modified plants. Uh, we need to ensure that all this technology isn't intentionally or accidentally used to violate the people's rights and civil liberties. Uh, we must ensure that they are used to further the values of the general population and advance the interests of uh, citizens. Um, and uh, our age of uh, technology has taught us to be wary of the dangers of certain applications, of course, of science, um, such as tools, as man manipulation, degradation. And we also have um, the image of uh, Dr. Frankenstein, monster. And uh, we have all become accustomed to the specter of um, nuclear, nuclear um, reactions and chemical attacks. And so we have learned the hard way that uh, the model of Daedalus uh, can be a dangerous character. So we should actually highlight the responsibilities of scientists to conduct and apply science with integrity in the interest of humanity for well-being and with respect to human rights. Uh, we call for a um, assessment of science and uh, scientific policies to recognize the value of science as a tool to push the boundaries of human knowledge to promote universal well-being, to monitor, analyze, and respond to environmental, social, and economic challenges. And of course, to address the capacity needs of scientifically, uh, of scientific countries. Um, unfortunately, the powers of science are more neutral. Uh, that means that they're easily used for bad purposes uh, as not good ones. Uh, because uh, mankind is, uh, we should not forget, forget here that uh, mankind is uh, not defined only by intelligence, but also uh, by conscience. So the moral challenge posed for us by modern society is that our scientific tools simply give us raw power and it's up to us to determine, to define the right ways to use uh, this power. We acknowledge the scientific freedom uh, that the scientific freedom should be respected by society if it is based on strict ethical uh, principles, such as beneficence, efficiency, respect for autonomy, justice. So we need a scientific virtue-based uh, approach. Thank you very much, Raina. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to continue our conversation about the creative society. And um, we have eight foundations of the creative society. So, um, in order to build a creative society, we, I believe, personally, should be united by one common goal. And, by the way, um, as a basis for building such a society, um, eight foundations of the creative society were formed, which are, by the way, as a result of thousands and thousands of interviews and social surveys, which were done by a lot of IPA participants in more than 180 countries. Um, these are the foundations which were already also mentioned in the article on the Latvian United's website. Now I'd like to ask our team support, uh, please um, show us the video about eight foundations. The biggest social polling in our entire history of civilization has been conducted during the last 10 years by people around the world. 180 countries, millions of people of different social statuses, denominations, nationalities, talk about the society in which they want to live in. And this is a creative society based on the answers of the people from around the world, eight foundations of creative society were established. A society where all people can live in happiness, peace, and prosperity. This is that very society that our prophets bequeathed to us. 
All prophets talk about the value of life, freedom, honesty, common human values, equality before God, mutual respect, and unification of people about love for each other. They talked about the common truth and about the world which we can create. The prophet said, there will be a time when we're able to build a creative society. We are honored to live in the time which the prophets talked about. When everyone is chosen, Thank you, uh, friends. Uh, Ryan, there is another question that I'd like to address to you. Please share with us your opinion about eight foundations. What did you like the most in the eight foundations? And for me personally, what benefits can you see for yourself and every person when these eight foundations are implemented in our society? Share with us, please. Well, um, the Eight Foundations are all crucial. Human life is precious, human freedom, human safety, transparency and openness of information of all because freedom of access to information is a basic human right, but is also a precondition for informed public participation in governments. And um, open and transparent governance is also considered a precondition for preventing and revealing corruption and maladministration. So openness and access to information is a crucial element and implementation and promotion of human rights. Creative ideologies also should be in the interest of humanity. Uh, human rights also are basic rights that belong to all of us simply because we're human. Human and so um, uh, they embody key values in our society such as dignity, equality and respect and development uh, of personality is also in the theme, uh, this framework very important. Self-governance allows communities to shape their social and economic well-being in the future. And, but the most important of all for me, I think that justice and equality, um, it's most important because we live in a world in which um, knowledge and technologies continuously challenge our values. Uh, so we all have to live in our daily lives and make decisions based on the fundamental values of human dignity. Um, social integration naturally is justice is uh, is related to social integration uh, as a dynamic process of promoting values, relations, and institutions so that enable all people to participate in social, economic, cultural, and political life on the basis of equality of rights, equity, and dignity. And this is a process in which citizens engage in order to foster um, strong institutions that are based on the promotion and protection of the human rights. Um, social inclusion is important. It's a, Multidimensional also process aimed at creating conditions which enable full and active participation of every member of society in all aspects of life. And what will be the result of all this foundation? Why this found, uh, why all these foundations are important? And because uh, they will result in a social cohesion. This is this should be the goal. Uh, social cohesion refers to all these elements that bring and hold people together in the society in a socially cohesive society, all individuals and groups have a sense of belonging, participation, inclusion, recognition, and legitimacy. So, Rania, when we talk about creative society, we talk about human with a capital H. What is a real human for you? Well, uh, each of us uh, thinks uh, that we are human. We walk, we talk, we look, we act like humans, but are we being true to our fundamental nature that springs from within us? Uh, because human beings have um, exhibited extraordinary creativity, innovation, heart and wisdom, but we still uh, find ourselves struggling, competing, uh, arguing, destroying each other and striving to find a sense of place in uh, this uh, chaotic world. Um, so I believe that the science of a real human being is around joy, compassion, uh, love, self-esteem, self-belonging, um, care for fellow human beings, and if, uh, uh, of course, environment, and uh, including both plants and animals, and if uh, we realize this, we are automatically ready for sustainable 
stress-free success and a deeply fulfilling and meaningful life at all levels. Um, morality is very important here because it, uh, uh, it helps us realize that um, it's more strong that of the claims of law and takes priority over uh, all over our self-interest. Um, so I think that the real human being should have these characteristics, should be compassionate, sympathetic, and uh, generous. Thank you very much. Rania, and um, continue talking about the creative society if we go to the practical part. In your opinion, what every person can start with right now in order to build such a society? What do you think? Uh, to, build a, to build a future and a new society, we need to imagine it first. If we don't imagine the future we want, we will never going to get there. So in order to contribute to the future of the global environment of society, we need to make efforts uh, to focus on long-term vision and have clear goals. This, of course, requires a paradigm shift so as to recognize the dignity, value, and importance of each person, and not only as an uh, ethical norm and moral imperative, but also as a uh, societal goal. Uh, no human being should be condemned to endure uh, a miserable life uh, as a result of his class, his country, or his religious affiliation. And uh, to this end, social inclusion, as I said before, uh, should be an overarching goal, as well as a multidimensional process that can play a critical role in promoting sustainable human development. So the first step is for us, for policymakers and uh, for scientists also, is to redefine uh, social inclusion as a practical tool to promote an inspirational and, uh, we can believe this, a realistic set of policy measures. Uh, orientated towards a society for all. Thank you. Um, so, Rania, following the tradition, whom would you like to invite for our next conversation and to hear his or her vision of a creative society? Mm -hmm. I would like to recommend uh, Dr. Chris Otiropoulos. Uh, he's um, a Greek uh, friend, but he lives in Australia. He's a CEO of uh, Global Opportunities Commercialization. He has over 25 years of global expertise in the commercialization of innovative healthcare and IT products, but he's also involved in many charities. Uh, with the goal to create a sustainable global ecosystem, Chris has a strong passion for innovations and that improve lives and uh, change uh, the world. Thank you very much. Uh, we will definitely contact And dear friends, if you uh, are interested to know more about the Project Creative Society, we are inviting you to visit our website, which is called alatraunites.com. And there, right now, by the way, you can see the new uh, screens. Click the button, join us. There will pop up a short form on one of the languages um, that you feel comfortable to fill it out. Uh, and you can send us uh, a request and we will contact you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Rania, for being with us today and uh, for this enriching conversation. So what would you like to wish to our viewers? I would like to close uh, with a quote of Mahatma Gandhi, who said that um, humanity is an ocean. And if uh, a few drops of the ocean are dirty, the ocean does not become dirty. And also the Dalai Lama said that love and compassion are necessities, not luxuries. Without them, humanity cannot survive. And to deny people with their human rights is to challenge their very humanity. Thank you very much, Ryan, for your sincere answers. It was a pleasure communicating with you today. Uh, and thank you, my hope, because uh, Geraldine, you were too bold dazzling today. And oh, I am communicating you. with you both. Uh, dear uh, friends, dear viewers, like it was mentioned already, if you'd like to know more about this project, to join this project, uh, you are more than welcome to visit our website to join us and be uh, the leader of changes. Uh, I'd like to uh, 
also uh, say one more quote, which belongs to Mahatma Gandhi. So don't wait for changes. Be the changes you wish to see in the world. Thank you, everyone, for watching us today. And we hope that you will be joining us in our next sessions, in our next live conversations. Thank you very much. And have a great evening or day. so that we can help change someone's life. We can make a difference. We can pick up those who have fallen down. But first we must be willing to give. We must be willing to sacrifice. Because after all, love is sacrifice. So give to those who really need our help. Let's come together now and make this a better place. Good deeds can save the world. Let's save the world. Let's be the hands that hold them and the hope that heals.